Hi everyone, welcome to On the Spectrum Kitchen. Today, we're gonna make fingerling potato and bacon soup with Gruyere cheese and green onions. Alrighty, let's get cooking. Alrighty, let's turn this down. Okay, that's better. All right, so first things first, we are gonna start on the bacon. So grab the largest Dutch oven pot or soup pot that you've got, and, and make sure you have eight strips of bacon that were chopped. Do this over medium heat first off. Should turn on the heat first. So you guys are actually in for a treat. I'm gonna tell you this while it heats up a minute. You're in for a treat because once a month I plan on doing like a special, like a meatless Monday or a taco Tuesday, that sort of thing. I did that once with the meatless Monday and it's been a while and I do apologize for that. But what you'll be happy to know is that one Saturday a month I'll be doing what I call today Soup Saturday. And I can't think of another recipe to use than my fingerling potato. All right. Uh, let me think it's been a good minute or two. Take, well, I am paranoid, so I'm gonna have a different spoon. Now, you're gonna take your eight pieces of bacon that you chopped. All right, if you don't have your sizzle, maybe the pan's not hot enough, but that's okay, just improvise. I'm gonna just get this piece off the spoon. All right, I hear some sizzling going on. Ah, oh, yeah, there's the sizzle. Should wait another minute, but that's okay, it happens. Now, you're gonna cook the bacon until it is crispy. All right, so the bacon is to my liking. So what we're gonna do is take a slotted spoon or a spider, which is practically this. Kind of looks like a spider web. It's probably why we call it a spider. You're gonna take the bacon and put it. Make sure it grease drains out as best as you can, and put it in a separate bowl. Make sure you have paper towels. I'm gonna improvise with a cloth. Don't worry. I'm... Right. I'll make sure it's deep flush. Make sure put them all there. Drop one of my towels. But make sure you keep the heat on. And don't drain the grease because we're going to be using gas. And don't worry, bacon grease is edible. Not sure why the others aren't, but eh, who am I to judge? So, over now. If you get any pieces, crumbs left over, that's ah, fine. Set these on the side. Set these aside. I'm kind of a mess here. And, uh, here we go. Now, I forgot to grab this, so make sure you grab a one fourth cup of butter. Salted or unsalted, I can care less, that's up to you. Alright, I'm gonna grab. Now make sure you to heat up just a smidge. That was the measuring spoon. So basically, a one fourth cup is four tablespoons of butter. Whoop! I was close. Okay. The butter is melting. You do not have to use things we use for the bacon, use a different one. Now with this one, melt it around to make sure you get it even. I guess the bacon grease should help out with the flavor. I guess that's why it's much easier for others. I'm gonna turn it up a little. So do you like soup? Do you prefer canned or fresh? You're gonna find this very ironic when I tell you this. Me personally, I kind of prefer the canned stuff. It's mostly chicken soup that I like, 
But I'm going to try to be more open than an example for you all and show that I can be adaptable. my favorite. Let me know in the comments if you prefer fresh or canned and what flavor you like. I'll be trying the soup for the first time too, so two for the price of one. All right, so the butter is pretty much melted. There's still like a little left. It'll melt within the cooking process of the vegetables. All right. Next up, you're going to take two cloves of minced garlic along with the, we're going to add with the garlic, it's called a mirepoix, which means celery, onions, and carrots, or bell peppers, if you have no access to carrots. I'm going to be calling this my three, two, my one, two, three, your mirepoix, make it easier to remember for me. So it's one medium yellow onion, two grams of celery that were diced, and three carrots. All right, full disclosure, I need baby carrots because I forgot to grab carrots at the store, but that's okay. And two little pieces of garlic. My eye skills aren't great, but I'm still learning. I'm pretty sure all the chefs in the world are learning. Now you're going to cook these in the butter and bacon for about three to four minutes. My stove is pretty weird, so I'm going to do four minutes. Stir it around until the vegetables are nice and tender. I'm going to do four minutes to start, but if I feel like they're nice enough, I'll stop it there. Let me show you. All right. This looks good. Now we're going to let that cook, stir occasionally. Like I said, my knife skills aren't great, but I'm still learning. All right. Now, like I said, this will take three to four minutes until nice and tender. Okay, so the three to four minutes are up. Sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties in the music. It will have my hands. That's better. Now, it's been a minute or been a few minutes. Vegetable should look something like this. All right, so next, we're gonna take a one fourth cup of flour because it'll help thicken it up. And cook it for about a minute or two, just so it'll look nice and thick. All right, so you should make it to look like this. It may look like it's clumped up, but don't worry about it. It's how it's supposed to look when you add flour. Next, I'm finally gonna add the star of the dish, the fingerling potatoes. You're gonna take a pound, quartered or cut in half. I just put them. I just quarter them. It all depends on the size. And then you're going to add four cups or 32 ounces of chicken stock. Broth, okay, broth. Don't worry, I did the math from the easy exact measurement. Now, the chicken broth, the vegetable soup, the chicken broth will add some extra flavor. Oh, make sure yours is unsalted. So I'm going to give the saltiness. But you can also use vegetable broth. Oh, and this is optional, but also add, where did it go? Oh, here it is. It's on the wrong spot, duh. Optional, but add a one fourth teaspoon of thyme. Stir it in. Oh, look at all this. Now, bring it to a boil, and then we can continue the cooking. 
All right, it's brought to a boil. It took a while, but brought to a boil. Next, we are going to drizzle in two cups of whole milk. Now we're going to slowly, and I mean slowly, drizzle it in. And we're going to stir constantly. a little fast but that's okay it'll happen what the milk does it'll add smoothness and brighten up the color a little done here. Thank God for now. Sorry, I'm going to hold this thing. All right, and let me show you what it'll look like. like. This. See how prettier that is? Now, we're going to cook it while whisking for about five minutes until the edges are bubbly. And... Whatever's left, getting the smoothness, I mean. That'll happen when it's done. All right, so I'm gonna look at, but there are some, there are bubbles around, whoop, bubbles around the edges, and some in the center, but you know, that's okay. It'll give it a little more time for the potatoes to cook. A little more. All right, now, to get it smooth, there are two options. Let me adjust my camera. You can either, Scoop out half with the ladle and puree it in the blender. Or you can use this, which is an emergent blender, and you'll be able to puree it in the pot. Now, what I'm going to do is use this, the emergent blender. Turn on the heat just a smidge and just blend it until pureed and smooth. Oh. Right, I've got to hold on to this. Uh, All right. So, just two. Next puree and now. Throw it around once or twice to make sure you didn't miss any potatoes or anything because the last thing anyone needs is to chew a hunk of potato, especially if it's cooked or not. Every once in a while there will be a little issue. Now I'm going to lower the heat real quick and I want to show you. Mm, looks good. It smells good. Next, we are going to give our ingredients. We're going to add one cup of heavy cream. It'll help bring more smoothness. All right. We're also going to add one teaspoon of Fresh parsley that was minced. I minced mine terribly. And we're going to stir to combine. Turn off the heat by accident, that's okay. Still lower the heat. And just stir it. You don't stir all the way because we're adding more stuff. Just a few more ingredients I need. Alright, looking good in the neighborhood. If you feel like yours wasn't puree enough, just keep going with the choice of blender you use. Next, we're going to add a two-third cup of sour cream. 
Try not to let it splatter, because last thing anyone needs is hot soup. Ow! Splatter on their face, just their body like I did. That hurt? Hmm. melting it down, I think the emerging blender should do the trick. Alright. Oh, I forgot, when you add the sour cream, I'm on a wall for beginning ingredients today, you grab some salt and pepper, not a lot, but enough. I'm just gonna get behind the camera so I can grab the salt. Tipped over the camera. <laughs> Make sure your heat is on a low enough setting. Now we combine it. Do what the recipe says, not what I do. Or do as I say, not even do what I'm saying is. Now you may find some clumps of sour cream, but that's okay. All you gotta do is just keep stirring it and then you'll be able to stop seeing the clumps. <clears throat> now while I'm stirring, I like to say, I know I once promised it was Mondays once a month and I haven't done that in a while. And I would like to apologize for that. But I promise it's going to change. Like I said in previous videos, that was my kitchen under construction. Your patience is going to get well rewarded. Starting now, regular specials, like Meatless Monday. Actually, you know, let me tell you about the specials you find. Meatless Mondays, Taco Tuesdays, or Tostada Tuesdays. Pizza Wednesdays. I'm already thinking, why pizza on Wednesdays? Well, I did my research, and Wednesday's the most popular day of ordering pizza. Just a thought. Uh, Thursday, it'll be pasta Thursday. I'm going to be some of the some sour cream that can melt in there. Fridays is Friday, meaning at least one Ingredients going to get fried. Saturday, that's different. Like today, soup Saturday. Then there's going to be a salad Saturday. And a sandwich Saturday. And Sundays are just as different. We're going to get a Sunday brunch along with a Sunday special. Get it? Ice cream Sundays. So, that one time that'll change is when there's an anniversary day on certain events. Alright, this will be really nice. I'm just gonna myself. Full disclosure, I only made soup once my entire life. That was a vegetable stew for a family who was going through some trials. So. And this was long before I even considered on this back kitchen. Like, quarantine sort of thing, you know? Alright, I think. Oh, no. Now, the majority of sour cream is already been melted. But there were a couple of clumps in there and that I couldn't get down. Alright, this soup is so smooth and thick. Now 
let's see. Um, I apologize, I have to watch me pick out some uncooperative pieces of clumps of sour cream. If you don't mind sour cream taste, you can keep it. I could care less. That's up to you. But me, I'm more paranoid. Let's call it that. Call it this for me, paranoid. All right, I think I got all of it. Yeah, pretty much got all of it. And now for the final touches, we're gonna add a three fourths of the bacon. Now my math is super bad, so I'm just gonna wing it. By the way, if you find some pieces that are a little too big for your liking, you can eat it. Okay, I'm gonna assume this is three fourths. Save the rest of the bacon for garnish. Oh, do we have a piece? Okay. Now you start to combine. Lower your heat and bring it to a simmer. All right, now time to assemble the soup. Grab your bowl. I know what you're thinking. Assemble the soup. It's an already assembled. True, but there's also the garnishes. Now, if you notice that some skin starting to form, you'll know what that looks like in soups. Just simply give it a quick stir. Personally, I'm not a fan of the skin in myself. All right, ladles in. Doesn't that look delicious? Now we're gonna garnish it with some bacon. Garnish with as much as you want. No shame in it. Garnish with a little pinch of the green onions. You can also use chives as a garnish. All I have are green onions, but I'm okay with it. And finally, some of the cheese. Now this is Gruyere cheese, but if you want, you can use any other cheese you want. Or a skip if you don't want cheese. Bada bing, bada boom. Fingerling potato soup with bacon. Thank you so much for watching today's On the Spectrum Kitchen. If you saw this video, hit like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends. Please follow me on Instagram and TikTok. The, rest, the recipe will be in the description below. Have a good day, everybody. Bye!